Hello, uh, my name is Zach Sprague, and my end of the year project for this class is on the uh, East and West cultural exchanges through uh, video games and video, video game development, and then also some of the technological um, exchanges that we can see through video games. So my thesis is that uh, Asian countries, especially Japan, have had great contributions to the world of video games, and um, that really shows in video game culture, and that um, the collaboration between the East and the West has led to many great advancements within video games. So going way back, the first video game was uh, Tennis for Two, created by an American-born physicist in 1958 by the name of William Higginbotham. We're going to start off by looking at Nintendo. So, Nintendo, sorry, excuse me, I have the hiccups right now, so I might have the hiccups throughout this presentation, but Nintendo is known as one of the largest and most popular um, video game companies and um, it really has an entire culture around it and within it, within it. Um, Nintendo is a Japanese company that was founded by um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name but it was founded in uh, 1889 and it actually started off making Hanafuda uh, which are Jap Japanese playing cards that you can see in the bottom right hand um, and then in 1902, they started making Western-style playing, playing cards that were actually originally meant for export um, until they became popular in Japan. So that kind of shows, even before Nintendo had moved into video games, how they were already bringing cultures together. together. Um, in... 1951 they changed their name of officially to Nintendo and then they began making video games in 1975 um, during uh, 19 during 1975 and for a few years they were just making art arcade games the big cabinet games they had not yet developed um, the smaller at-home count consoles and in 1980, they released Don or they worked on in 1980. Donkey Kong released it in 1981, and that is where we first saw the most popular Nintendo character and one of the most popular characters of video games of all time, which is Mario. So in 1983. Uh, Nintendo released its NES or Nintendo Inter Entertainment System known as Famicom in Famicom in Japan and it wasn't until 2 years later in 1985 that the NES actually came to the United States so it was released in Japan before the before the United States which we will see is a common pattern amongst uh, um a lot of the video game systems I'll talk about um, and then they released the Game Boy, which was their first handheld handheld system in 1989, and um, it wasn't actually the first handheld video game system ever. The first one was in 1976, uh, created by Mattel, the American toy toy company. And those would only play one game, whereas the Game Boy, you would have the system, and then you could plug cartridges into it to be able to play different play different games. So it's interesting to see how uh, the Japanese company Nintendo took that idea from Mattel, an American company, and applied that um, to their own own games with their own technology to create what we see as the Game Boy. Um, and then what's really make, what really makes Nintendo popular and, uh, what most people think about when they think of Nintendo is their characters. So Mario, Zelda, Link, Donkey Kong, the list goes on and on. Um, everyone has 
a favorite Nintendo character. Everyone can think of about a dozen Nintendo characters, and that's really what makes Nintendo Nintendo. And um, it really... The, those characters kind of come from Japanese culture. Um, they draw from many different cultures around the world, but it's interesting to see how um, these like Japanese cartoon, cartoony characters have become so popular and um, recognized worldwide. So more recently, Nintendo has released the Wii, which was in 2012, and the Nintendo Switch, which was, which was in uh, 2017. Um, the Wii was very popular because uh, it used motion sensors, and that was a pretty new technology back in 2012. They were uh, breaking the barrier in regards to um, video gaming, transferring from just holding a controller to actually moving to control your character. And then... Um, so that was very popular um, amongst families as a family game. And then the Nintendo Switch is extremely popular as well because of its portability. Um, you can plug it into a TV, you can take it on the go, and then it also takes advantage of that movement sensor um, type thing that the Wii had. That the Wii had. Um, and then... Uh, some very recent news, uh, Nintendo is opening Super Nintendo World in Univer Universal Studios Japan, and that will be opening in 2021. Um, and I know, I, I'm extremely excited for that. Hopefully I'll be able to go one day because uh, Nintendo has had such a big impact on my life, and uh, that's something I'd be very uh, intrigued and excited to go, to go see. So the probably what is the most popular uh, video game series in the world, and um, what video game series probably most draws from Japanese culture is Pokemon. Um, I mean, it started as a Japanese card game. It has now developed into so many different things. So many, I mean, just movies, TV shows, games. It's still a card game. Um, but uh, it was the for a video game. It was originally uh, released in 1996 as uh, Pokemon Red and Pokemon uh, Green in Japan, and then in 1998, two years later, they released it in the United States um, as Pokemon Red and Blue, and that was for the Game Boy, so Nintendo's Game Boy. Um, since then, it, I mean, there's just been so many games, um, so many renditions of it. Um, the most popular being on the Game Boy, the uh, DS, which is another Nintendo system. Um, then And then the Nintendo Switch, which is also very popular. And then um, one completely redefining game, Poke Pokemon game that we've seen is Pokemon Go which was the app for the mobile phone developed in 2016. Um, it completely revolutionized mobile games and uh, tied in the game in the real world. You could go into AR and catch Pokemon right in front of you, which was uh, revolutionary. Um, and it really took over the world. You could, you could play wherever you went. You would walk down the street and you would catch Pokemon. Um, and people would go on trips all over the world just to catch di different Pokemon. Um, and uh, it was extremely big when it came out in 2016, and it's still big four years later. Um, Pokemon really takes the most from Japanese culture with the animated characters, the the drawings, um, the draw like the cartoon. Um, I mean, there's the TV show, which is close to an anime. Um, there's the cards, which are originally Japanese. So it really takes a lot from Japanese culture, and it's made it uh, wor a worldwide phenomena. And uh, the 
the video games have really had a large part to do with that. Another way that, uh, another example of Japan dominating the video game culture and the video game world is PlayStation. Um, PlayStation started off, uh, Sony partnered with Nintendo in order to create a video game uh, system that could play a CD. Um, this Super Disc is what they worked on. Um, and then they ended up splitting off and uh, uh, Nintendo went one way, Sony went their other way, Sony went another way to create PlayStation using uh, similar technology to what they had tried to develop with Nintendo. Um, so, uh, they released, Sony released the PlayStation in 1991, and it was introduced to the United States in 1995, the original PlayStation, and they not, by two, 2003, they had sold over 100 million units. So that just goes to show how this Japanese company can release a just a little box that you can play games on and it can take over the world. And um, I think it was two, they were able to sell two million in the United States alone in just the first year of it being in the United States. Um, and now PlayStation has developed so many uh, new consoles, including their newest one, which is the PlayStation 5, with the newest technology. Um, and thinking about how these Japanese uh, video game designers and video game uh, creators, um, counts, like console designers and everything, uh, how much of an impact that has had on the rest of the world that has that it has all come from Japan because with it all coming from Japan that Japan has been able to share their culture with the entire world just through video games you can see that through Pokemon you can see that through Nint the Nintendo characters and you can see that through the games on the PlayStation so it video games have have been a way of Japan sharing their technology and their ideas and um, their art forms and um, just their culture to the entire world. And it would be interesting to see if uh, any other culture had such an impact on video games, what video games would look like today. So uh, Xbox, created by Microsoft, uh, is one of the only really successful video game companies that isn't from Japan and um, it really shows a contrast to how dominant Japan has been in uh, the video game uh, just market and uh, it was the first American console sold since 1996 when it came out in 2001 the um, most recent one before then was the Atari Jaguar, and Atari was another American brand um, that competed with Nintendo a lot uh, in probably, uh, the 80s and 90s, um, so earlier into video games. Atari was very competi competitive then. It was, that was also kind of like an American versus Japanese market compared to now where it's Xbox and PlayStation. Um, so Xbox is more of PlayStation's competitor, and um, it seems like when PlayStation releases a new console, so does Xbox and vice versa, and they're always trying to compete on build, building on each other's um, new technologies, and it's really interesting to see how that has propelled um, themselves forward.